In this video, we're going to work a little bit with the uh, epsilon permutation symbol. Um, back in video number one, we introduced this equation. We haven't proven this. In fact, we haven't really explained what it means yet. We're working up to that. But in video number one, we worked a little bit with the Kronecker delta symbol. Now, in this video, we're going to work somewhat with the uh, epsilon permutation symbol and also explain some of its basic properties. Um, the purpose of these videos is to first establish this relationship here, prove this identity, because this is a very, very powerful tool that can be used to uh, prove complicated vector identities. So anyone interested in physics and engineering, this is a tool, a technique that's very well worth learning. And what we're going to do to start off this video is consider some of the basic properties of the permutation symbol. Back in video number one, we talked a little bit about the Kronecker delta symbol. And it's a simple setup, really. This is either going to be 0 or 1. If these are identical numbers, it equals 1. If these numbers do not match, then it's 0. Now, the epsilon permutation symbol, we're going to be using it um, in the context of having three numerals, three indexes. It can have more and it can have less. But we're going to be working with three. And of course, the natural sequence is 1, 2, 3. Now, if we shuffle these numbers around so that we have a sequence of 2, 3, 1, that could be obtained by moving the 2 over and then moving the 3 over. So that would require two shuffles or two permutations to get this sequence. That's an even number. And whenever you have it in this form or an even permutation, this has a value of plus 1. Here, this is 3, 1, 2. So that would be obtained by doing two shuffles or two permutations. So all these are an even number of permutations of our basic sequence. These all have a value of plus 1. Now, if we deviate from our natural sequence 1, 2, and 3 with an odd number of permutations, then it has a value of minus 1. So for example, here is 2, 1, 3. We just shuffle that over once. Here is 3, 2, 1. This would be from having uh, three permutations, two of them to get to here, and then another one to move the position of the two to here. That's an odd number. So this is minus 1. And here we have 1, 3, 2. That would come from an odd number of permutations, just 1, moving the 3 over to here. But that would give it a value of minus 1. So when we're working with the permutation symbol, we're going to be looking closely at the order of these numbers and as to whether they represent uh, an odd number of permutations from the natural sequence 1, 2, 3, or an even number. If it's an even permutation, this has a value of plus 1. If it's an odd permutation, it takes on a value of minus 1. Now, here for the Kronecker delta symbol, the only way this was non-zero is if we had identical numbers here. For here, for the uh, epsilon permutation symbol, no repeated indexes. If any of these numbers were the same, then it automatically becomes zero. So what we're going to do is, in this video, use the properties of the epsilon permutation symbol to determine the uh, uh, the determinant of an n by n matrix. And we'll do it with a 3 by 3 matrix. Normally, if we have a 3 by 3 matrix, or the way you're probably used to handling it in determinant form would be to expand it out using minors. We're going to use a different technique in this video now. We are going to approach it from this point of view. We're going to prove that the determinant of this matrix can be expressed in this form. We have epsilon ijk 
A1, A2, A3, there's three rows here, and then I, J, K for the second numeral. Now notice here that each one of these indexes is repeated. I is repeated, J is repeated, K is repeated. As we explained in video number one, when you have repeated indexes, that means you're summing over those indexes. And in all of our videos, unless we say otherwise, it automatically means that not only that we're summing, but we're summing from values of 1, 2, and 3. So let's do that just for i. So i is going to take on values of 1, 2, and 3. So first, i is 1, so we have epsilon 1, j, k, a, i is 1, then these stay the same. Now i is going to take on a value of 2. Now we have a, 1, 2, these stay the same. Then we'll have i equals 3, so you have epsilon 3, j, k. Now we have i is 3, so you have a, 1, 3, these stay the same. So we've summed over i, and that gave us this expression. And that expression is written on the top of our next page. We're not going to write these out as we go along. It's just too laborious. So we have them all prepared ahead of time. But this is just what we had written on the previous page. Now we have to let j equal 1, 2, and 3. So let's just follow the steps. We're going to expand it out by letting j equal 1, 2, and 3, and then let k equal 1, 2, and 3, and let's see what kind of an expression we get in the end. Now I said j can be 1, 2, or 3, but when j equals 1, we'd have epsilon 1, 1. That's a repeated index, so that would just be 0. So that doesn't contribute to anything, so we just ignore the 1. Now we say, well, j can equal 2. So we'll have epsilon 1, 2, k. And then here, this becomes a 2. So you have a1, 1, 1, a2, 2, 2. That stays the same. But from here, j can also be 3, because you have epsilon 1, 3. No repeated index. So we have 1, 3, k. We have a1, 1, 1. j is now 3. So we have a2, 3. That stays the same. So that's it for this term. We picked up two new terms right here from j equal to 2 and j equal to 3. j equal 1 just gives 0, so we don't bother with that. Now let's go on and work with this term. We have 2jk. So j can take on values 1, 2, and 3. It takes on the value 1. We have 2, 1, k, a1, 2. But now k took on the value of 1, so that's a2, 1. That stays the same. j can also take on the value 2, but it gives us a repeated index, that's 0, so ignore that. But j can also take on the value 3, no repeated index there, so we will have epsilon 2, 3, k. j is now 3. j is 3, so that gives us 2, 3 right here. That term stays the same. So this term, once we added the j's in, gave us two more terms. And now we have this term, 3, j, k. Again, j can take on the values 1, 2, and 3. When j is 1, then we have epsilon 3, 1, k. That's right here, a1, 3. J takes on the value of 1, so we have a2, 1. That stays the same. So J took on the value 1. Now we take on the value 2. We have 3, 2. That's not repeated, so no problem there. So you have 3, 2, k. Now we have a1, 3. a2, 2. A took on, J took on the value of 2 right here. This stays the same. 
So we started off with this. We summed over the I's, which gave us this. And now we summed over the J's, and that gives us six terms. Here, 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 and here. Now we have to sum over the K's, but it's not as complicated as, as what you might think. Let's take a look. K can take on values 1, 2, and 3. But remember, no repeated index, so the only time we get a non-repeated index is when k equals 3. So this term, k takes on the value 3. And we have that written right here. 1, 2, 3, and this becomes a 3. For here, the only non-zero term, j can be 1, 2, and 3, but the only non-repeated index is when k equals 2, and that becomes a 2. And we have that designated right here. So no new terms that we picked up. Now here we have 2, 1, k, but again, k can be 1, 2, and 3, but the only time we do not get a repeated index is when k equals 3. That will be 3. And we have that shown right here. Now we move on to here, term number 5. Again, k can take on values 1, 2, and 3, but the only time we do not get a repeated index is when k equals 1, and that will be 1. And we have that shown right here. Now we move on, and we have here 3, 1, k, k can take on values 1, 2, and 3, but only 2 is going to give us a non-zero expression. So we have 2 and 2, and we have those designated right here. And then finally, from our sixth term, we have 3, 2, k. Only non-repeating index is when k equals 1, and that becomes 1, and that is what we have right here. So this is what we end up with then. Six terms. Where do we go from here? Well, now we have to go back to what we said previously about our even permutations and our odd permutations. So let's deal with that. Here we have Epsilon 1, 2, 3, that is going to be positive. Then here we have Epsilon 1, 3, 2, that's negative. So this is minus. Here we have Epsilon 2, 1, 3, an odd permutation. That's minus. Here we have epsilon 2, 3, 1, even permutation. That's plus 1. Here we have 3, 1, 2, an even permutation. That's plus. Here we have 3, 2, 1. That's an odd permutation. That's minus. So what we have so far then, once we insert this information, we have This is just plus. This is a plus term. This is a minus term. So we have an a11 is common to each one of these. So we have a11 times this minus this, which is what we have right here. 
Again, this just means plus 1. This just means minus 1. So we have these numbers minus these numbers. This is common to them, so factor it out, and we write it like this. Now here, this is plus, this is minus, and we have an a12 that's common to each of them. Now for here, we're going to factor out a minus a12. And the reason for that is we want to compare our answer when you expand by minors. When you expand by minors, you have the minus sign here. So we'll factor out minus a12. And when we do that, we have this. This is this would be plus a12, a23, a31. And that's what it is right here. So we factored out from these two expressions, we factored out not a12, we factored out minus a12 and got this expression. Then here, this is positive, minus this, a13. It's common to them, factor it out, and we will have this expression. 2132, 2132 minus 2231 minus 2231. So finally, after doing all that rigmarole, this is the expression that we end up with. And now we compare that to having this determinant and expanding it with minors. And it, that gives us a11, this minor determinant. We have a22, a33, a22, a33, minus this, a32, a23, that's right here. Then we have minus a12, we have a21, a33, a21, a33, minus a31, a23, a31, a23, and then we have this term, a13, a21, a32, a21, a32, minus a31, a22, minus a31, a22. So you see that using the properties then of the um, epsilon permutation symbol, we have another way then of writing the determinant, like this. And we're going to use this um, very much in the future videos. Now remember how the cross product of two vectors was expressed. If we have a vector like this, three-dimensional vector A, three-dimensional vector B, when we take the cross product of it, we express it like this as the determinant of this matrix. Well now, as you can probably guess for yourself, we can express the cross product using the epsilon permutation symbol as well as the scalar triple product. That's what we'll do in the future videos. But anyway, that will finish it off for this video. And again, um, the playlist for these videos is at the website digital-university.org.